Hello everyone! Joe, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while since I uh, actually put a video out. Been a bit strange recently. You've probably noticed that it's absolutely freezing out there. I've had, uh, well since that last video, I've had three and a half rounds of golf. It's been mostly around about three or four degrees centigrade with a north wind. So you're going out there wrapped up, covered up, so you can't swing the golf club and it hasn't been a lot of fun and I'm sure you're feeling the same way. We can't wait for spring to turn up. In fact, we're playing tomorrow, the three of us, uh, my two sons and myself, it's predicted to be six degrees. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit disappointed with this global warming stuff because it just isn't happening and we could we could use a few extra degrees right now. I have noticed though that uh, the idiots have stopped gluing themselves to the road. I wonder if it's because it's um, too cold perhaps? So what is going on? Well, the West Monmouthshire letter is now on my wall. Change the picture on the laptop. That is Kao Kiao, which stands for Mountain Green, or if you reverse it, Green Mountain Country Club in Thailand. 27 hole track, lots of the monkey grass, and I've never broken an 80 on it. it. There's something about it that just defeats me. But I won't be playing it on my next trip because I'm going somewhere else. I, I was planning to go back to my usual spot and show you all my usual golf courses, but as I went to Phuket, somewhere different, I thought I need to experience something different for myself. So you're going to see somewhere else next winter. I'm talking about next winter, we haven't even had spring and summer yet. Bloody hell, roll on spring. It has been so cold. Jumpers. Now I'm going to start selling jumpers. We're just sorting out some odds and ends. So I bought two extra myself and got this on the front. I haven't got the big one on the back. So this is, oh God, I'm full of gas. This is what I'm hoping to sell at some point in the future. No doubt it'll be all sorted out by the summer when you don't want to buy a jumper. But anyway, I'm going to try and attempt to sell jumpers. So what else has been going on? Well, last Saturday I paid a visit to West Monmouthshire up to the golf club there. I spent about four and a half hours, maybe five hours in the clubhouse saying hello to anybody who wanted to be said hello to. And we had some interesting chats and I sat with the secretary for some time, had a spot of lunch. I was going out for a knock in the afternoon, but uh, I say it was three degrees with a north wind at 1,450 feet above sea level it was like it was like knives just going through you now some brave souls did go out for a knock um some of them went out at seven in the morning so they would have, they're, they're sort of like the seven o'clock crowd go out early get your round of golf in and then get in front of the tv and watch sport all afternoon sounds like they've got it right doesn't it and then on the sunday my two sons and i went and visited a golf club and we paid our money and we're now members of another golf club. But we are still members at Lillybrook until the 31st of March. So there's, there's every chance that we will go and have a last hurrah there before we commit fully to the new course, which we are playing tomorrow. And I am gonna lug the camera around tomorrow. Now something different happened today. We went to see SAS Golf. We went to see Simon. Now he just opened his new academy studio where he gives lessons and does his second-hand club fitting. That is, if you don't know SAS Golf, if you don't watch him, all the links will be down below, so you can go to his, you can go to his YouTube channel and what have you, and have a look to see what he does. But one of his specialities is second-hand club fitting. So if you're on a tight budget. You can go to Simon, he's got racks full of various iron heads and driver heads and, and the shafts and he can get you fitted into a set. 
Now from there, I don't quite know how it works. I don't know whether he says, right, we've fitted you into this club head and this shaft. Now you go off to eBay and you know what to look for. Or whether he says, I will now go and look for these and I will go on eBay and Marketplace and what. Uh, I don't know how that bit works. But essentially you take the risk out of buying secondhand clubs where you'd buy a set from eBay, go out on the golf course with them and find that they don't suit you at all. So if you're on a tight budget, give Simon a ring. Really, he's a very good teacher. Now the reason I went there was for a golf lesson. Because he'd just opened up this studio, um, he basically said, look, I'm available for golf lessons now and I've got to start paying the rent on this unit. So I booked a lesson. I then donated it to the kids. So it was £50 for an hour and they got half an hour each with Simon. Which is just enough, half an hour. And um, I took the camera down, I set it up, and then I thought, I'm just going to be in the way here. So all I did, I switched it off again, put it away, and left it at that. See, I'm, I'm not that desperate to get videos out there because I don't do this for a living. Now I did go through a period where I was putting myself under pressure. You've got to get a video out, got to get a video out, got to go record another, got to do some editing, got to... And eventually your head just explodes. And I've backed away from that and it is much healthier mentally for me not to be under pressure to put videos out. So the last couple of months where it's been too damn cold or the golf course has been heaving when the rain stopped. Um, I just haven't bothered. And it doesn't really matter. But talking about money, I will tell you what my end of year results are for YouTube. So my first year of being monetized, I'm looking at, after tax, an income of £220. Which isn't a lot when you consider that this second-hand camera was 450 and the tripod it sat on was 100 and then you got microphones and um, there's my desk, my desk microphone is here and you know I'm never really going to cover my costs but that isn't really what I'm in it for. I mean it would be nice to make £2,000 in a year instead of £220. But that'll come, or it might not come. Actually, it probably never will come. But then I'm a small channel, and I don't tend to do clickbait titles. I don't spend two hours working out what my thumbnail should be to make it make people click on the video. I just do this for a bit of fun. But I have to thank you for watching the videos and for watching those tedious adverts. Because £220 has obviously helped me out have a, have a few days out away from the golf, uh, away from my own golf course and go and visit other ones. Now, you could say, well, if you hadn't have bought the camera and you hadn't have bought the microphones and you hadn't have bought the tripod and all the other stuff, You'd have had extra money to go on away days anyway, Simon. You would actually be better off than starting YouTube. But I think YouTube has done more for me than just making a few pennies and making a big fat loss on my, my investment in equipment. It's, it's helped me enjoy the game more. And that's, that's important, isn't it? When we play this to enjoy it. Um, it's not supposed to be beating yourself over the head with a piece of 4x2. So I, I say I will thank you for your help in me having a few days out. And in having a few days out, I found golf courses like this. Now this is a gift that keeps giving that I didn't know about. See, West Monmouthshire opened in 1906. And in 2006... One of the other golf clubs that opened in 1906 kind of like wrote to all the other golf clubs and said, how would you like to set up a 1906 club? <coughs> and 
and 50 of those clubs said, yeah, why not? Now, what is the 1906 club? What it does is it allows members of golf clubs to go and play other golf clubs for free. Yes, that's why I say this is the gift that keeps giving. Now, some of those clubs are a very long way away. I mean, there's only 50 of them. So where are they? There's, there's Manchester way, Yorkshire way, uh, Bradford, Leeds, Northumberland, Scotland. Some of them are a very, very long way away. Some of them are down towards London direction. Now, you can't just turn up and play for free. What you need to have is an introductory letter from the, your secretary and you need to book a time and there will be restrictions on those times like they might say not on a Saturday or not on a Tuesday morning because that's when the ladies play or not on a Wednesday morning because that's when the seniors play. And there's one that says you can't play it during the European Masters. And that's because one of the clubs is Kranz Sur Sierre in Switzerland, where they play the European Masters. Now, one of the courses is the Seve Ballesteros course, the one that he re redesigned for, for the European Masters. And the other course on site is a Jack Nicholas course. So, um, I've got a jar and I'm going to start putting money in that jar and perhaps sometime next summer I will have enough money in that jar to go and have a long weekend in Switzerland and go and play those two courses. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Now, uh, there might actually be a green fee involved in that. I, I don't know whether you get it absolutely free or whether you just get a, a reduced rate. But I think the thing with Switzerland is going to be the cost of accommodation, food and drink. That's going to be the big issue. Getting a cheap flight, that shouldn't be a problem. So um, that's what the future holds for me. And of course this November, I got three weeks down in Thailand. I say down because it is sort of like down the other side of the world. Although it is still above the equator by a little bit, so it's still this this half of the world. Um, that isn't going to be my last trip. I've got another trip planned for two years after that. And whether I get to go after that again will depend on how long I can stay in employment. As soon as I retire, that's it, I can't go. So that little, I think, that little scare that I had before Christmas where it looked like I was going to have to retire early um, certainly brought certain things into focus. So at some point it's got to come to an end. Hopefully not for a little while yet. So we're playing at our new club tomorrow. It's off mats. Some of the mats are a long way forward, uh, so the holes are playing very short. You know, there's, there's par fives which are playing 440 yards or something like that. They, they are forward. Um, there's been some work done over the winter to two of the greens. I think one of them's reopened. I think the other one isn't open until about the 25th of March and what else now we're, we're getting and we're into March so that means I can start playing nine holes after work again so that will obviously mean I can make start making videos again what I'm going to make the videos about I don't know it's going to be can a five handicap break 90 <laughs> now you remember I um I made a wish list, didn't I? A fantasy wish list of what I would like out of a golf club. And of course you're not going to get everything off your fantasy wish list, are you? Otherwise we'd all live five minutes drive from Wentworth and it only charges £10 a year to play it. 
So obviously you don't get everything off your fantasy wish list. So if I can remember what they were. So the first one was, is it affordable? Yes, it is very affordable. It is incredibly affordable and it will stay affordable in retirement to the point where I can probably stay a seven day member in retirement. So that's one box ticked. Another box ticked was less than half an hour from my house or a maximum of half an hour from my house. Unfortunately, that wiped out a lot of golf clubs. You know, by putting that travel distance on, there's lots of golf clubs which I will, uh, look at me, I'm making hand gestures down here and you can't see what I'm doing. So there's a lot of golf courses that just got wiped off the list because they're more than half an hour away. Not because there were bad golf courses, but because they were too far. So how far is it to this golf course? Well, it's 10 minutes. And if that doesn't give you a clue as to where we've gone, nothing will. Now I wanted, um, I wanted practice facilities, if you remember. So has it got any? Yes, it's got a driving range. Um, not my favourite cup of tea driving ranges, you've heard me say it before, but it's better than nothing. And of course, because the travel distance is so short, I'm saving a lot of money on fuel for the car, so that will pay for the driving range. So, all in all, it's, it's a little bit better than staying at Lillybrook, especially when you consider the yearly green fees. And the last point was value for money. And what I mean by value for money is, can I get on it and play 100 to 110 rounds of golf a year? And the answer to that is yes. You know, if I get dressed for golf and load the car up for golf at, on lunchtime, then I can leave this house early enough after work to get up there and tee off early enough before all the other working guys of booking tea times and because the membership is smaller if I take a day off in the week I can get on the golf course there's absolutely no excuse for me now but playing golf and getting better at golf or getting sorry not getting better obviously getting better from here but getting back to going out there and shooting my handicap basically so it's ticked all the boxes. I mean, I would like to practice off grass and I would like to practice for free, but the number of places that's got that facility now is, is tiny. When I tick off golf courses in this area that have got a practice ground, you, you end up with a, with a list like that. So, you know, you have to make compromises. There are always swings and roundabouts. But essentially, financially, I'm better off. Time-wise, I'm better off. And the amount of golf I can play, I'm better off. So, I'm going to drag the camera out tomorrow, although it's going to be very cold. So, you're walking around a golf course with a metal tripod in your hand when it's down at four or five degrees, or six degrees as it's going to be tomorrow isn't a great deal of fun. So we'll see what we can do and um, you'll see where we've gone to. So until the next video, which I hope to make tomorrow, but I might not because of the cold, cheerio and thanks for being patient. Ta-ra. <laughs>